Okay, welcome everybody. It's uh, Noel here from uh, Well Coach Co UK. I'm delighted today to be talking to one of my favourite girls in the fitness industry. It's uh, Nikki Medeiros Anderson, and I say that because she just does such a great job of uh, balancing her family of four, her wellness and her fitness, and also her career, which is today really what we're going to talk about. Nikki's going to discuss her ten success rules for sassy women. <laughs> so, welcome to the call, Nikki. Thank you, Noel. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And how's Chicago today? How we... uh, oh my gosh, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, I couldn't have asked for a better day. I think I was sharing with you earlier, I got out for a great run this morning so that I'd be geared up and ready to uh, to share my story with, with your viewers. So. That's you. <laughs> so um, that'd be a great place to start, Nikki. Why don't we start there? Just like, um, you know, like an overview of your sort of career history as such, because, uh, sure. you know, how, how long have you been in fitness now? Um, I started in the industry back in 1979, wow. um, actually 1978, 79, I know, a long time ago, um, long before personal trainers were personal trainers, actually. Uh, we were, you know, exercise instructors. Um, I had my first job came at a place called Gym and Trim. Um, I had lost 50 pounds. I was an obese teen, and um, after I lost my weight and realized that, wow, if I can do this, anybody can. Um, Okay, welcome everybody. It's uh, Noel here from uh, Well Coach Co UK. I'm delighted today to be talking to one of my favorite girls in the fitness industry. It's uh, Nikki Mathiris Anderson. And I say that because she just does such a great job of uh, balancing her family of four, her wellness and her fitness, and also her career, which is today really what we're going to talk about. Nikki's going to discuss her 10 success rules for sassy women. <laughs> so welcome to the call, Nikki. Thank you, Noel. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And how's Chicago today? We... Uh, oh my gosh, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, I couldn't have asked for a better day. I think I was sharing with you earlier. I got out for a great run this morning so that I'd be geared up and ready to uh, to share my story with, with your viewers. So That's you. <laughs> so um, that'd be a great place to start, Nikki. Why don't we start there? Just like, um, you know, like an overview of your sort of career history as such. Because, uh, sure. you know, how, how long have you been in fitness now? Um, I started in the industry back in 1979. Wow. Um, actually, 1978, 79, I know, a long time ago. Um, long before personal trainers were personal trainers, actually. Uh, we were, you know, exercise instructors. Um, I had my first job came at a place called Gym and Trim. Um, I had lost 50 pounds. I was an obese teen. And um, after I lost my weight and realized that, wow, if I can do this, anybody can, um, I wanted to save the world, which is kind of, you know me well enough to know that tends to be how I do everything. <laughs> and and uh, so I, I went to work for this health club and wanted to change lives. And I was trained, you know, in an hour uh, how to work with people. And uh, after two years, I was the highest grossing saleswoman there. I was only 17 years old. Um, but they fired me because I spent too much time with the customers. <laughs> Which is your <laughs> you biggest trait. That. You're all about the clients, aren't you? Which, you know, again, I just love because, uh, you know, ultimately that, that is what it's about. We, we, we become good at what we do, but it's for the benefit of the client, not for our well, egos. And I, <laughs> and I think you, we've had the conversation before that the biggest component missing from our industry is that connection with our clients and with our customers. And mm. So I remember leaving that position kind of puzzled, you know, wait a minute. <laughs> um, but the one gift that I got, because there's obviously a gift of everything, bad, good, or indifferent, and the one thing that I took with me was I had a boss who, even though fired me, uh, really took me under his wing and introduced me to the motivational world. So, you know, the Zig Ziglar's, you know, all the, the big guys, and that became a very, very important part of my life. Yeah, and that, that's a big part of what you do again, aren't you? You're as much about living your best life as you are Absolutely. for the health and fitness. And so it's more real, Absolutely. isn't it? Which is, again, an approach I like, which I'm glad you're part of this sort of series. Thank you. So, Thank you. Um, yeah, so I after I, I left the industry, uh, my real passion at the time was theater, which I'm sure you're shocked to find out. Uh, and so <laughs> I, I pursued that um, through school and, and went on and did, you know, what I thought I wanted to do. And I actually moved back to Chicago. At the time I was living in Texas, but I moved back to Chicago uh, to pursue um, my acting and singing career. And I met my husband. Right. And the rest, they say, is history. <laughs> yeah. But again, with fitness, it's not just fitness, is it, Nikki? You know, we're there to look after the customer, whatever sort of day they're having. Absolutely. We're there to pick them up and leave them better off at the end of the hour than at the start. 
that was always my attitude. <laughs> and because you work yeah. in entertainment, you know, well, that's that's what we do too. Well, I, I always joke, you'll appreciate this. I always say to my clients, I say, I'm here to entertain you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that really is a big part of it. It's, you know, to make, make each and every session exciting and interesting, um, effective, of course. Of course. So, <laughs> that, you know, they, they want to come back. And with the people that I work with, which is typically the deconditioned and obese populations, mm. those are the people that haven't had a reason to come back. You know, they went once, they were discouraged. Yep. And, you know, they never return. So my objective is always to have people realize their potential, realize their, you know, the abilities that they have and get them excited about coming back and continuing. Mm -hmm. And can you remember back now all those years to your obese teenagers or? <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, it, it's interesting because after I left, uh, I, I remember saying to myself, if I ever get back into the health and fitness arena, my focus will be on the customer because I think that's a really missing component. I mean, I remember it was all about sell, 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 sell. And the really sad thing is, is that when I fast forward and I, you know, now today in my life, when I travel and I go visit health clubs just to see what they're doing and what's going on, it's the same thing. I pretend, you know, I, I'm looking around and it's sell, sell, sell. They have no interest in where I'm coming from, what I've done. And in my business today, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it's always about the customer. I want to learn everything I possibly can so I can be the best trainer. And I think that that's yeah. part of it. So you can really individualize it to their situation you and then to. help them fit it into a much bigger sort of, you know, life plan for their life, isn't it? Which to me is the missing ingredient. You know, fitness yeah. in itself, um, you know, wellness in itself. It's all doable, but unless it fits into something bigger, then it's very hard right. to sustain. Right. Um, no, without a doubt. And... But, you know, the fitness industry, I, I won't get started, but uh, they think they're in the leisure industry and, you know, they, they relate it to going bowling, to going to the cinema, and uh, that's what they think their product is, and they don't have something far more exciting than that. Um, you know, right. where we'll we both be today as we approach our more mature years, if we hadn't sort of kept fit and well all our lives, you know, and uh, um, there's still nothing I can't do today if I want to go rollerblading, if I want to go cycling, and it's because, you know, I've now got over 30 years of training behind me, and I always tell people it does get easier. There's like an accumulative sort of uh, benefit. But if you yeah. let yourself go, it's a long way back. <laughs> yeah, and that's the problem. And, and for those people that feel that it, it's, you know, they look at the peak of the mountain and say, no way. Uh, my job is just to have them look straight ahead and to say, you know, that's, that's where we're starting. And, you know, the top is, is there, but we just can't, you know, jump to the end. We have to kind of explore the journey. And, I mean, I'm preaching the choir, but um, just to backtrack a little bit. So uh, when I got married, you know, we had children right away. And I remember saying, you know, I have to do something. I can't, I, I'm, you know, there are some women that have the gift of being an at-home mom, and I admire that. I knew that that wasn't me. Um, I, I could be a great mom, but I needed something. To You've got a world to save, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that requires a lot of extra time. <laughs> So, so, go ahead. so I was going to talk about, you know, like the real truth about women in business is where we were sort of going to sort of start with this call, isn't it? Okay. Do, do you, do you think it, it is different for women in business these days? Um, you know, we're moving into a new age where, if anything, women have an advantage. They're better communicators. They're more emphatic. They're able to really listen, really get the client. And right. that is turning into a very real advantage right now. Yeah, I, you know, one of the things that I was going to say when I decided that I had to go to, I wanted to go to work, um, I went back into the fitness arena, and I was really surprised to find how many men. That it was at the time, it was probably eighty percent men. I mean, yeah. and yeah, for and sure, eighty-five percent perhaps. And you know that that was a, a risk for me, but it was it was a passion, and that's what I always tell women. You know, you know it because there's no stopping you. You know, a hundred people told me that being a, becoming a personal trainer was like not nearly as respectable as being a writer, which is what I was doing. <laughs> and it, it didn't matter because I knew that this was my calling, if you will, mm -hmm. and there was nothing that was going to stop me. It was just the strategy. But I think, you know, with women, the disadvantage that we have is no matter where we are, I mean, it's still 2011, but we still have this, this perception of, of others that we're supposed to do it all and do it really well. And, and a perfect example is that if your kids go to school and say they're mismatched, and even though my husband was the one that sent them off to school, he doesn't get the blame. I get the blame. Wouldn't their mother, you know, dress them better? So, we do, you know, we do have those pressures that 
um, that it's 2011 and they're still there. We still have a difficult time being taken, I don't like to use the word seriously, but we have to work twice as hard to get our point across and we have to do more showing and doing than just speaking. So. But roll for 2011 and I think, uh, you know, certain trainers, uh, they're very much in demand today because you can totally yes. transform someone's world, not just body, you know, their, yeah. their complete world. And once Absolutely. you get a reputation for that, you know, and people start seeking you out, uh, right. that's the difference between, say, 79 and uh, 2009, 2011. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's just wisdom. You know, what you were saying is, you know, that, you know, as we get wiser, you know, we, I, I'm a better trainer, you know, when I have a 27 year old that has an amazing educational background, but he or she has years um, of learning, which is what really makes this industry great because every day I learn something new. Yeah. And they don't yet relate to what it feels like to be in a, in a 40 year old's body and a 50 year old's body. Okay. And it does change. And um, it's certainly not, ter certainly not terminal by any means, but uh, right. it's different to being in a 20-year-old body, isn't it? So, yes, but, um, but just a quick one, uh, one too, is, uh, you know, I've just been spending some time with Pat Cash and a few tennis players, and his trainer all these years was a female um, trainer. And I did say to him, because he's Australian, very macho, and uh, you know, how did that work out for you, Pat? And he's, he just said it was brilliant. And I think in some ways, for a guy like that, he probably couldn't have a guy training him because he's, he's too much the Aussie male. And so a female works sure. well because, you know, she knows his stuff and she inspires him to actually do it because they're tennis players, they want to be playing tennis. It can work too. So just throw that one in because you and I both, we know so much is just mindset. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, and I think too, it's, it's really having the ability to read clients. Um, and I think women are, have a little bit more um, in, intuition there. I think that they, because they come from a little bit more of an emotional place, uh, they're more sensitive to that. So, for example, if I have a client that comes in and you can tell he or she just had a brutal day, I'm going to alter a little bit how I train. I'm, I'm very aware of that. I'm very attuned to that. I think women tend to do that a little bit more where I can see it with my male trainers that just come on in and I'm going to do, you know. I mean, they're great, but they're, they're just a little bit different, you know. Sure. Hence, women, men. Okay. So the real truth about women in business is? Um, I would say the real truth, I mean, you know, there's there's five things that I, I tell women that the mistakes that they make, if, if perhaps that's a good place to start, um, but so easily remedied. And number one is we undervalue ourselves. I see this all the time with women in business. They don't charge enough. Um, they don't value their time enough. You know, you can change that on a dime. You know, once you get to a point, and, and that's what, you know, you and I have talked about what's in my DVDs, what I lecture about all the time is, how do you finally stand back and go, you know, I, I need to value myself a lot more because this is what I bring to the table. And once you really realize what you're bringing to the table, yep. you're going to realize that that value needs to be increased. It's just absolutely imperative. Uh, I mean, you know, look at look at what, you know, others in your area are making, men typically, and why aren't you putting yourself into that same category? What's so different? And I think, uh, you know, women are actually more humble than men, aren't they? You know, us guys, we're just like... Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're a little bit more gun ho a bit more competitive, and uh, yeah. happy to say that, um, you know, um, I am worth this. I, well, and, you know, that's what I tell women, too, is that you have to believe it. Because if you go up to somebody and you go, well, starts. I know it's a little more expensive, but no, I charge $110 an hour for training. That's it. I mean, men do it. <laughs> you know, why do we have such a hard time? And it's exactly what you said. You know, we, we're a little more humble. We question that. We feel a little bit more guilty about uh, uh, uh. So um, know your value and do not be afraid. If you believe in your value and what you bring to the table, nobody's going to question you. You know, no doubt. And it starts with you, which is a great point. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing that I tell women is getting out of your comfort zone, um, you know, realizing that there's – so much out there for you and sometimes you need a push um, if you're a mom you do it with your kids all the time you know whether it's going to a new school or starting a new school year every time they do that they're getting outside of their comfort zone so when's the last time you got outside of that comfort zone and challenged um, your potential I don't think we do that I think we can it's really easy to get stuck or to say oh maybe I shouldn't do it I don't know if I'd be good enough you know questioning your ability um, which leads to the third one is never doubt your ability um, there's no one more brilliant than you. It's just you realizing and, and 
willing to um, explore what that, that potential is. Yeah, and that goes back to the previous one, doesn't it, Nikki, that if you stay in procrastination and you don't do anything, bit by bit your confidence wavers, but as you Absolutely. try things, as you get success, your confidence grows with each success. Absolutely. And so and, it's and like I, a catch-22, isn't it? But uh, right, have, you, have you got a tip there for helping someone just sort of step out their comfort zone? Because, you know, I, I practice regularly. I, I, I will talk to anybody. If I walk into a shop, if I go to a petrol station, and I'm regularly practicing. Because as a trainer, the best advert you have is yourself. You walk in, uh, high energy, smile, looking fit, and people remark right. on that. You know, who are you? What do you do? And, and, you know, like you, I've worked with quite a few celebrities. When they walk in a room, they have that sort of entrance that they have. Yeah. I actually try to practice that myself. Yeah. <laughs> Because it, it does, it, it does, does make a difference. That's what that was one example of, you know, myself taking out the comfort zone. That uh, you know, and you try to attracts people to you. You know, when you carry when you carry that confidence, um, mm. people are attracted to you. Whether you know, I mean, you know, from a business perspective, it's all people help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. People love success. People. So if I were to give a couple tips for people mm. to get outside of that comfort zone, mm -hmm. one of them would be to find mentors. You know, who do they admire? You'd be amazed at the people that would be willing to share their stories with you. If they're truly in it for the right reasons and you were to contact them and say, how did you get where you got? Um, they're going to respond to you. I've never, ever asked anybody that I can think of at the top of my head, and I've reached high, that anybody has said no. It might have been a while before they responded, but I always got an answer. So find people that you admire um, that, you know, that could potentially mentor you or simply just ask questions. And the other thing that's a really big one for me is find your what motivates you. Like I'm a you you know I'm a big one for motivational quotes. Every single morning I go through if I'm feeling like I really need to work on um, something in my business, I'll go on and say quotes about business character, mm -hmm. and I'll just read through them. And I am so pumped up after reading about fifteen yeah. or twenty things that there's nothing that I can't do. Yeah. And one more tip is to look. And, and if you do that daily, Nikki, uh, eventually it becomes part of your psyche because it's there at the front of your mind all the time. Because sometimes I'm on Facebook and Twitter. And, you know, sometimes I'm really looking out for a new quote that I've never heard. Because like you, I've been doing that for quite some years. Yeah, um, that it yeah. becomes part of your everyday thinking. And, and that's powerful. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, get rid of all that negative chat, all that bad, you know, self-talk. And put some of that into the forefront of your head. And uh, brilliant. Many of us do need to reprogram a lot of our thinking um, after, you know, almost, you know, 20 plus years of working all with All of women. us do. Daily. It's like, uh, oh, yeah. you know. No doubt. I, I would say that with my particular experience, maybe just women are more vocal about it than, than my male clients are. <laughs> um, I know, you know, I have this thing that I work on with my clients when I say, oh my gosh, you look great today. The first thing a woman will say is, oh, my hair is dirty or, oh, I didn't. And I go, no, 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 no. We need to redo that. Hey, you look great today. And your response is, thank you. <laughs> Got it. You know, and, and that's a really hard thing for women to do is to really accept that, you know, they're pretty amazing. And what, what I was going to say is the third one, before I forget, is to really make sure that you go back and you look at your successes to date. We forget, you know, no matter how small of a step it was, it's a step forward. So it's so important. Every day, I have a success journal that I've had since 1991. Wow. Um, when I started my business. And I write every year, I write in it, I set my goals. Every six months, I go through it. But when I look back, because if I'm having a day where I feel like I'm struggling a little bit, yep. I go back and I look at 1991, I go, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you're pretty awesome, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you've achieved a lot. You know, it's yeah, a and you need to do that. I think we need to um, appreciate and acknowledge our successes and not forget how hard we work to get those. You know, I've actually heard it called like an achievement board as well. As much as you can mm -hmm. have a vision board, which is looking ahead to the future that you want to create, the achievement board is looking back and just patting yourself on the back for all the things that you have done by stepping out of your comfort zone. Absolutely. And, and again, we all Absolutely. need that. We all need that reminding. And, uh, you know, every single memory is stored in our heads. So let's make sure we remember the good ones. <laughs> and then let's bury the other ones, yeah? So. Yes, I agree. I agree. So number four, we, we got to... Uh, so number four, um, 
or going back to the notes, <laughs> that, you know, the, the next thing I've got is like revealed the number one strategy that makes all the difference. Um, the no oh, huh, being selfish. <laughs> right, good one. Uh, yeah, because I'm going to cover this in my presentation too. So, yeah, you know, um, in my experience, we we women are typically caretakers. Um, we are brilliant at taking care of everyone else and making sure that everyone else is okay, but we rarely take care of ourselves. Um, I have women that will come in and train with me and say, I've never had a massage. I've never, you know, set a goal for myself and, and achieved it. Um, and you need to be a little bit selfish, and that's not a negative thing. Being selfish is not a negative thing. Sometimes it's the most important thing that you need to have in order to move to the next level because we know this. When you take care of yourself, it's the only way that you're going to be able to take care of the others or to take care of the things that you really want to take care of. So I think being selfish is, is really important. We need to step out of that, that caretaking you know, role all of the time um, that, we, that we tend to have. And it's not a bad thing. It's just figuring out that balance. Because um, I actually this, heard that selfish is expecting everybody else to think and act the way you do, because that's like a one <laughs> view of the world. That really yes. is the true definition. What you're saying is you, you can't give what you don't have, and if you're responsible for inspiring people to live their best life, and you turn up zero energy, uh, not uh, having yeah. eaten, out of shape, how can you possibly be giving everything you've got to your clients? And so with a, you know, a family of four, your own wellness and your own career that you know, you've worked hard on, it's absolutely vital, isn't it, that you know your boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, um, guilt is a, is a big part of what I see with a lot of women. But both a lot of my women friends that are business owners, um, their teens, you know, tends to be a lot of guilt. And I think we really need to get over what I mentioned earlier, that we cannot do it all. I can't do everything great, but I can focus on one thing that I know I need to take care of and do it well and do my best in the other areas. Um, as long as I'm striving to balance things, which is important, and that means taking care of myself, um, you know, that, that's really important. Um, you know, my objective not, is not only to be a successful businesswoman by really making successful successful clients, but also showing my family and my children mm -hmm. that whether you're a mom or a dad, mm. as long as you have a goal and a passion, mm. that's that's what keeps me going. Everyone needs to have that. And you know, I think women are very, very passionate and sometimes we stifle that mm. um, because we just don't feel like it's it's appropriate if it's not, you know, in our immediate family. Mm. That's just, that's just my quarter, you know what what my observation is, and, and I love that because that's my observation too. You know, you mentioned focus on your strengths, don't focus on yes. your weaknesses. Uh, if you focus on your weaknesses, all you do is you have a lot of mediocre weaknesses. Um, so <laughs> by focusing on your strengths, get very very good at those and know what they are. That's how you really help the clients. And it's like like me with languages. Even though I live in Spain, everyone says surely your Spanish should be brilliant. I am not linguistic, <laughs> and so that would be me working on my weaknesses to get very good at speaking Spanish because, unfortunately, I don't really need it for what I'm doing, and so that's just an example. And again, with the passion, that's how you overcome the selfishness. If you're working on something bigger than you and you're helping a lot of people through that, then you overcome that sort of too much uh, focus on yourself because you know that you're actually making a difference to a lot of people. And then that comes yeah. back to the vision. You said your goals by having a big picture they're chasing. That's what gets you out of bed every day. Oh, That's what I, you I, know, I, sustains you through the challenges, through the hurdles, to know that, you know, okay, it might be three steps forward and one back, but, uh, you're, you know, you're making a difference. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I think that, that that's important. You know, what is your ultimate goal? You know, why are you doing this? Which is why it's so important for women to, you know, lay out a strategy. What is it that I want? How do I want to go about making this happen? Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of put things into play. Like when I was creating my business, it was 50-50 with me and Bill. It wasn't, you know, me trying to figure everything out. It was like, hey, <laughs> we're in this together. We need to make this happen. And here's what I need. So. Okay. And so next question, how do you get out of your own way? And what do you mean by that? Uh, I, I would say that was probably my strong suit, <laughs> is, is getting, getting in my own way. Sure. Um, I, I think that, um, again, what you, you said earlier is, is so key, and that is 
we tend to focus not on our strengths, but our weaknesses. And that's when we get in our own way, when we start to, start to self, you know, doubt ourselves and, oh, you know, maybe I really don't have the knowledge to do that. And I'm gonna give you a great example. And I don't um, share this very often because I think that um, for a long time, I believed that it was what held me, held me down. Um, I never went to college. Hmm, wow, ouch. <laughs> um, for many, many years, that was, that was my excuse why things didn't do the business the way that I wanted to. And finally, I went back and I looked at a quote, and forgive me, I cannot remember who it is. I want to say it was Tony Robbins, but he said something about traditional education, that there are, there are the A students teach the B students how to work for the C students. And I think it was something along those lines. And I really sat back and I said, look, I can use this lack of a college education as an albatross. I could go back to school if I wanted to and change all that, or I can move on and continue to do the things that I've done brilliantly without a traditional education because clearly my education has been life. Yeah. And yeah. it took me a long time to get over that and say, well, it doesn't make me any less knowledgeable. Um, if there's something I need to learn or something I need to get better at, you can guarantee I will study it until I know it better than 90% of the people because I almost overachieve to make up for that. And that's the power we have today. It's there if you just make the effort, isn't it? And uh, I think that's a common one, Nikki. That holds a lot of people back, um, you know, the lack of education. And I think the alternative for those who have got and got the education who then think the world owes them a living just because they have the education, <laughs> and that's the complete opposite. And I was probably there once as well, so you get over that one as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so, so I think just to, to hit that nail a little harder is, is to get out of your own way is, to don't, is not letting those things that you perceive as your weaknesses stop you. Um, either address them and change them or get back to focusing on what makes you really, really passionate, um, the things that are your strengths, and that's going to propel you forward. And that goes back to the conversation about moving out of your comfort zone. Yes. And also, like you do, keeping a journal. I'm just such a big believer in self-awareness. The better Absolutely. you know yourself, the better you can operate in an entrepreneurial sort of world. Because well, and I think, you know what advice to take on board, you know what criticism to take on board, yes. and you know what you need to do to move forward. It's a very valuable process in itself, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I think, too, you know, we're in an industry um, – what I'm going to say is true. That's a very ego-driven industry. And I think there's a lot of people that are trying to change other people. Uh, I think you and I know the only person that you can change is yourself. Yes. And all I try and do is an amazing job every single time I work with a client. I can't change anybody. I can only inspire change within yep. them. And then it's their choice if they want to make those changes to, you know, increase their health or improve the quality of their life. But ultimately, that's their call. I can't change them. And, you know, I know I will hear some trainers go, oh, you know, well, they just don't listen. You know, we all learn differently and we're all ready at different times. So I never look at changing people. I look at just working on myself to be the best trainer I can and, and inspiring change within them. But they ultimately have to make that call. Two great points there, Nikki. So we all learn differently. So in which case, if the clients aren't getting it, try explaining it in a different way, even right. if that is even a different medium. You know, nowadays, particularly online, we have audio, video, and text. Right. Uh, there's a number of ways to get your message across or, you know, show, uh, don't tell, that sort of thing. And right. as you say, to, to turn up yourself, sometimes we've just simply got to inspire. It's the very nature of turning up the best we possibly can. It's enough for most clients to keep them motivated. I, yes. Uh, no, I agree. I agree. Doing that. And there was a second one there too, which I'm um, just, and you said we, we learn in different ways. And the second one was? Um, <laughs> we're in such a role here. <laughs> it um, it's straight at yeah. the moment. Your picture has frozen on me and that sort of sidetracks me. But I'm hearing oh, you perfectly okay. on the audio, so I'm just sort of carrying okay. on. Okay, great. <laughs> Great, great. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, no, we were talking about just getting out of our own way and then, mm. you know, getting back to really focusing on the things that you do. Really and everybody's at a different stage of readiness to change. I think that's another critical point. I was discussing this with Jeff Hampton. And again, yes. sometimes, you know, if people aren't getting it, it just means we're not getting them and we're at what stage they are right now to change. Absolutely. 
I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. where I say, you know, being a good communicator, being a very emphatic listener, and simply a lot of experience. I mean, work with lots of different people to get the best out of people. Isn't that so true? I, I believe that the best thing that I can do as a trainer is be a great listener. I, I you, you know, what do they say? We have two eyes and two ears and one mouth. That means we need to listen, you know, twice as much as we talk. Yes. And very often I will hear, hear trainers feeling like these clients just, you know, want all of this information and education. They don't. Sometimes they, you just need to stop and listen to what they're saying because if they're not being successful, I mean, obviously there's, there's so many components to that, but the real one is listening to where they are and exactly what you mentioned earlier, you know, perhaps they just need um, a, a different delivery. So um, looking back at my notes, number four, I've got how to get out of your comfort zone. Have you any tips for people who feel a little bit stuck right now, who, you know, procrastinating a little, just to get them uh, some momentum back again in their lives? Um, I, I kind of mentioned it earlier, and that is finding people that, that you admire and reading their stories. Um, or talking to them directly, you know, how did you get to where you are? I mean, there's nothing to me that's more inspirational than reading stories about people that had absolutely nothing and were able to overcome and go on and, and do, you know, great things in their life. So those are the kind of people that you need to do um, to, to really research and, and either try to connect with directly or, or just to read about it. You know, we have the Internet. You can type in successful women's stories. Um, granted, there's, you know, books out there, but I would say finding people that you admire and, and figuring out their story and, and how it relates to you, because there's going to be a lot of common denominators. There hasn't been a book that I've read or a story that I've read about someone that there hasn't been that common denominator. Um, also reading, uh, you know, what you and I talked about earlier, you know, keeping all that positive stuff in your head. Mm -hmm. That does push you out of your comfort zone because you're never going to achieve anything um, unless you're, you're willing to push yourself. And sometimes you're going to read a motivational quote that's really going to go, wow, that is so, so powerful. And then also keeping your journal with your goals and never, never just set a goal without having, you know, the action behind it and the, the, the date. Um, I always said, okay, here's what I want to do. Here's going to be the steps that we're going to take to make it happen. And here's the date that I want it to happen. Nine times out of 10, it happens. And if it doesn't, then I just change my strategy a little bit um, in order to make it happen. Great tips, Nikki, because ultimately it's about, you know, fear or resistance. Sure. And there's slight sure. difference. So some of the tips you mentioned, they can help you with the fear and in building your self-confidence, your self-esteem, and yeah. knowing that you're uh, chasing something bigger than just you, which yeah. helps, yeah. you know, when you're going after something. And then the resistance, this is where, you know, it's a lot of the um, positive psychology that's out there these days, the quotes, that sort of things. It just helps us just dispute some of their thoughts, you know, how realistic are they? And Byron Katie is excellent in that field. I don't know if you've read her, you know, the work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Great process just to sort of keep taking yourself through and understand that everybody who's ever done anything, they've all had their own challenges, their own hurdles to face, and they've faced right. their own demons, their fears, uh, dragons, etc., etc. Well, and, and the other thing that I think is really crucial here too is – making sure you're following the path that you really want. Mm -hmm. If you find that you're consistently just not hitting the mark, you know, have you really asked yourself, wait a minute, how badly do I want this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's crucial. You may find that you, um, you're doing this for a hundred other reasons under, other than something that's really inside of you that you're really, really passionate about. So if you find that you're consistently, you know, holding back and just not hitting the mark, Perhaps it's really not something that inspires you enough to really, really want to do. That's happened in my own life with, with the franchising. You know, I thought, oh, yeah, I've got this great model. I'm going to franchise. And I, I had excuse after excuse after excuse. I know it certainly wasn't because I didn't have the, the potential or the ability to do it. But I real, or the, it wasn't fear. It was I just didn't want to. But I think sometimes that's like, oh, gosh, I hate to admit that I don't want to take this business and franchise it because then I could make a – billion dollars but at the end of the day I've never been motivated just by money um, it's so many other things and so at the end of the day I said franchising is I just really don't want it and after that it was like a load had been lifted off my shoulders I stood back and I said okay what's my next goal <laughs> and that comes back to your journal knowing yourself because mm -hmm. if something makes you feel heavy and you think, oh, you know, I've got to go and do this, I should, I ought, those sort of things, versus, you know, joy, you know, I really want to be doing this, 
Uh, it really can be that simple. Does it make you feel heavy? Does it make you feel light? And uh, yeah. they're both great guides as to what you really should be doing to be fulfilling your passion, your strengths. Yes, I, I agree. Um, there's another saying that I have, and, and sometimes I have to explain it, sometimes I don't, and it is, if you have to work so hard to make something happen, hmm. you might want to stand back and, and rethink that. And here's what I mean. Building a business is hard work. But you know what, Noel? I never thought of it as hard work. Every day was a gift. It was an opportunity. I loved the hard work, so I didn't even look at it as hard work. It's like yeah. training for, for a run. Yes. It's not hard work. I just love doing it because it's part of this process that just jazzes me. Yeah. So, you know, if you feel like this is just really hard work, it's like a relationship, mm. and you're constantly banging your head up against the wall and it's not going anywhere, mm. maybe you better, again, really rethink what you're doing because hard work to me is is not hard work if I'm doing what I'm meant to do. Yeah, and you're right, it's just like a relationship. If it's a bad one, then uh, it's heavy going, isn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so number five here, I've got how to embrace your full potential every day. Um, you know, this, this whole idea of embracing, you know, full potential. Um, do you think there are people who either get that or, you know, or, or, or don't, who thinks it's a little bit sort of pie in the sky? Because ultimately, we're, we're only really happy when we're really sort of growing and contributing. Yes, I agree. And, and everything else is just not sustainable, isn't it? You can have the best dinners, the most beautiful beaches, flashiest cars. It's just not sustainable. Yeah. We're, yeah. you know, as humans, we are uh, pre-programmed to grow and to contribute. No, I, I agree. I think that there's kind of a uh, – the perception of potential maybe is not completely understood. Um so I kind of look at potential as, as, for some women, I'll say it's a new opportunity for you. Every day offers you, you know, an opportunity to do something different and better than maybe you've done it before. Just something different that you hadn't discovered, which is kind of addressing that getting out of your, your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, potential for a lot of people are scary because what if I can't reach it? You know, they already start analyzing it. Um, every day offers an opportunity to learn and to do something new. And that's the only way you're going to realize your potential is by seizing those opportunities each and every day, no matter how minute they might be. It might be going out to lunch with someone you've never met before, um, going to a networking event, uh, meeting a new client that might not be the best fit for you, but it's an incredible opportunity to learn about someone different that you haven't worked with before. And it just will ultimately make me a better trainer. Um, to, de de excuse me, to deny yourself the opportunity to really accomplish things that you want to is um, kind of robbing the world of getting to know you. And, you know, we know that the world is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And when I look at Facebook and just some of the connections that I've made and some of the amazing people that, that I've met, awesome. um, they, they have helped me realize things about myself. I'll read something that they wrote and I'll go, wow, that's really, really powerful. Mm. Um, so, you know, reaching your potential is really about understanding opportunities that are available to you. And if you seize them, you're likely going to learn from them and grow from them. And that's the only way that ultimately you can really discover who you are and, and just max your potential. And it's a little bit like uh, Charles Dickens at Tell of Two Cities because he's from my town. Yes. But it is pretty much yes. the best and the, uh, the worst of times because, yes. as you said, with social media, there's so many people who inspire me daily to, uh, you know, just do more, be more, and, uh, you know, make more stuff happen. Um, Absolutely. Whereas otherwise, locally and elsewhere, we're surrounded by doom and gloom by all these people. <laughs> but, uh, okay. you know, it's, uh, it's, it really is the best and worst of times these days, isn't it? But I think the people who will rise are the ones who just keep focusing on all the positive things, all the things that are going right in their life, and they keep maximizing those and leveraging those opportunities. Yeah, that reminds me of a great cartoon um, someone showed me years ago, and it was it was from the nineteen like nineteen thirty, you know, right during the the Great Depression, and it was a cartoon of a guy out on the road selling hot dogs for ten cents, mm -hmm. and someone yelling out their car window, you know, or whatever. Um, hey, buddy, don't you know there's a depression going on? And he just has a question mark because in his mind he had a business and he had a job to do, and he was he was not phased by that. And you know, we can really really get our minds screwed up by really falling into all the negativity and all the stuff that's out there saying, this is not a time to start a business. This is not a time that you're going to flourish. Well, who's to say that I can't? Yeah. In, in <laughs> yeah. times of chaos, there's massive opportunity, isn't there? Because people Without have problems and they need to solve them. 
Yep, without a doubt, without a doubt. So, yeah. should we run through your 10 successfuls then, Nikki? We probably reached absolutely. that time in the call. Yep, absolutely. So the first one is to think differently. Uh, you know, sometimes we get locked into saying this is the only, you know, way that I can go. Think a little bit differently. How can you be more creative with, with your um, business? What can you what can you do differently? Is it people that you need to connect with? Is it programs that you need to bring into your business? Um, thinking differently allows you to explore um, new territory in your business and to keep things fresh and interesting. So that's always a, a big one for me. Um, don't focus solely on money. I may have some people go, oh, well, then what's going to motivate me? Uh, I know for me, it's been changing lives and motivating others to, to change their lives or inspiring others to change it. I think sometimes when we get so focused on that one nut, um, it really can, takes the joy out of the journey. That's my experience. So yeah, that's and money is simply a metric of how well you're doing it. Yeah, it's yeah. When you, when you I, do I it. suppose. Yeah. But I also know. Know people that are making a lot of money that I don't know if they're doing such a great job. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I see that here. Um, I don't know if you see it there. You know, when you've got a baseball player making eight million dollars a year and he's batting one sixty, that's a problem for me. <laughs> sure. sure, but it, again, it's staying very focused on your own sort of mission, isn't it? And not yes, getting distracted, uh, knowing what we without, can control. Nope, without question. <laughs> um, I have I have the tiger. Being like, going back to what you just said want to achieve and how you're going to do it. Um, what what are the steps that you're going to have to take? You've got to have action steps. It's one thing to say, I want to grow my business by 10% or I want to start a business or I want to increase the, the number of, of classes that I'm teaching or clients that I train. But how are you going to make that happen? You have to be very, very specific in, yeah. in your action strategy. And then also have an end date for it. And like I said, if you reach that date and it isn't accomplished, that's not a bad thing. It just forces you to stand back and go, okay, what do I need to do differently? What kept me from doing this? And it might be that one thing. Maybe I just don't want it bad enough. And then that's okay. Then you reevaluate and, and you move on. And, and that's brilliant because once you've got the matrix, you know what works and what doesn't. Absolutely. Because I did mention to you, I was listening to somebody, and their very comment was, you know, well, I don't really know what worked or did, and I just kept working really hard, and uh, <laughs> that stuff happened. That's the yeah. hard way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, if we're not learning, then, uh, you know, we, we don't know that it's a straight line from A to B. Right. No, I absolutely agree. Um, the other one is get out of your comfort zone. I think we addressed that pretty pretty much. Sure. Um, the next one is embracing your values, and this is really important to me because everybody runs their business differently. And what you alluded to just a couple minutes ago, don't be looking at the other guy. Who you need to look at is yourself. And what's important to me and what are my values? And, you know, when I go to bed at night, is my side of the street clean? You know, just for a lack of a better um, analogy. But just embracing your values and being very true to yourself, I have found that that's what has kept me excited and motivated and built my reputation is really holding true to my values. It's how I make every decision about my business. So that's really important. And that's not necessarily ethics or morals, is it, Nikki? It's just right. being true to your passion. That, Absolutely. You know, if, if you're not passionate, well, you know, life's too short not to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. It goes back to those things we talked about earlier, you know, being a little bit selfish and, you know, focusing on what you need and understanding that, you know, you, to take care of others, you have to take care of yourself. So embrace those values. Um, innovate or evaporate. Um, that's one of my favorites. And I tell women all the time, every day I try and do something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just changing a way that I'm going to lay out my session that day or, or changing a way that I'm putting together my marketing plan. Being innovative is absolutely vital to the success of a business and even my own personal life. How can I change around my workout program? Um, yeah. How can I surprise my kids today or, you know, whatever it might be. So innovate or evaporate is one. That's easy and that's to your entertainment uh, background surface in there, isn't it? That, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, how can I make someone's life a little bit brighter today? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's imperative. Brilliant. Um, Brilliant. Having a clear mission and vision. And, you know, that goes, you know, strongly to, to the business side, business side. What is it that you want to do? How are you going to make it happen? And what's it going to look like in five years? Yeah. Um, and that's think, like red cars on the highway, isn't it? The, you know, once you <laughs> focus on the red cars, you see them. That's why the vision and the mission is so important because there's so much happening today. The, the amount of information on social media is unbelievable. We need to is. know what we need to tune into and what we need to tune out. 
Yeah, because otherwise you become absolutely saturated with so much that you that you you know freeze up and you don't know what direction and to go. You lose so. who you are, which is the very essence of what you've got to offer. Right. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Um, being a great leader. Uh, I know sometimes they say, you know, that you're either a leader or you're a follower. I think that, that great leaders um, can be made. Um, it's just going back to what we talked about earlier, and that's believing in your potential, focusing on your strengths, and really having a passion about what you do because I never, I was the baby of the family. I, I was never, you know, the leader in, in my household. Um, yet in, in my business, I'm in a leadership role, and I'm very proud of that, and I Every day I strive to be a great leader for my staff um, because that's the only way I'm going to empower them to be great trainers and um, when we all work together. So focus on being a great leader because you can impact lives more than you'll ever know. But that, again, comes with the confidence, being passionate, being focused, having your mission and vision and all of those things in place. It's all part um, of the total puzzle uh, piece, yeah, isn't it? And you need to be putting all these pieces in the right place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's not what you know but who you know. And I, I kind of say that tongue in cheek because obviously, you know, you need to know uh, what you're doing. But it's also very, very, I learned so much just by talking to other people. Not, uh, let me rephrase that, not by talking, by listening to other people and hearing their stories and hearing their challenges and how they overcame them. You can learn so much. I would sit down with people that had been long retired in business and I learned some of my best business tips from those people because sure. they had been there and done it. Uh, so, you know, it's know people and seek people out that you feel like you could learn something from. I mean, you can learn yeah. something from everybody. Um, and, and that goes back to education, Nikki, because all education, they stuff you with a lot of pretty useless information, really. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's well, the myth that some students fall for, because they come out and they think, this is it, you know, I'm going to earn a great salary now. But the premium at the moment is the ability to adapt. It's not just learning. We also need to unlearn and then learn again. It's uh, right. knowing what's most relevant at uh, any one time. Uh, no, absolutely. I, I agree. Um, and the last one is uh, what I should, should there be a drum roll. Is this the most important one? Yeah. Yes, yes, because this is what makes us sassy. <laughs> okay, got it. Never take no for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I can tell you, there were many times that people told me no when I wanted to, you know, be a writer in the industry and I wasn't a journalism major, or when I wanted to open up my business and everybody told me I couldn't. You have no business background. When I wanted to be a trainer and people said. What education do you have to be a trainer? I never took no for an answer. I still don't take no for an answer. And I would ta tell women, never take no for an answer. It will propel you forward and give you the confidence you need to put all of the pieces into place. Love that, because a multimillionaire said that to myself as well. I said, what's the most important thing? And he <laughs> said that, you know, you've got your vision, you're going to innovate, you're going to go and make something happen. Don't let anybody tell you it's not possible. Absolutely. I believe that with all my heart. Mm -hmm. So, Nikki, absolutely fantastic. Um, where can people go to find out more about you? And also, I know you've actually got a, a terrific offer, and it, and it sounds on the surface a little bit markety, unless somebody actually knows you. But right. me knowing you, <laughs> I know that you've only got so many DVDs available, and that's part of this offer? Yes, yes, it's part of the offer. And this is um, genuine, her? that you, you actually said to me, I, I've only got so many. How do I make this work? So. Right. Me being I, a bit of a marketer as well as like a wellness guru said, uh, you know, how about this? So. Well, you know, I'm always passionate about sharing information. It's just not enough hours in a day um, or not enough DVDs in my, <laughs> in my studio here. So what I, I have five DVDs um, that I can give away, my Women in, in Business DVD. Um, so I, I only have five. So the first people that uh, are able to connect with you, um, then that, I'm, I'm not sure how they're going to get a hold of me, but I can send them to my website, which is another great way to get a hold of me. But again, I can only do the first five people, so I just really want you to know that. The other thing that I really want to give away, but again, time is of the essence, is some coaching sessions. Uh, I'm so excited about the opportunity to do this, and who knows who might be watching and maybe struggling at a point. If I can help, it would be my privilege to do that. So I'd like to give away three 30-minute coaching sessions. And yeah. again, there's only three. So um, the best way to work that, go ahead. Yeah, and it's not just 30 minutes, Nikki. We're, we're talking about 32 <laughs> years of uh, business <laughs> experience of, uh, you know, um, a mother, um, a wife, a wellness expert, and a career woman. Yes, 
Yeah. And I mean, just years and years of, of time. And, you know, I, I can help you kind of overcome those things. I do consulting anyway on a basis and on, on a regular basis um, for my other job. And, we find and, and it's all about reality fitness, isn't it? And that's what I like is. about your approach. It's very much like a get real approach. There's no yeah. hype. There's no nonsense. It's what works in the real world. And this is Chicago, which is one of the most competitive cities in the United States. Yeah. yeah. So um, you can learn more. You can see uh, other DVDs that I have at realityfitness.com. Um, best way to get a hold of me, um, nikkianderson.com. Or you are welcome to, uh, to contact me through the website, which is probably the best way to go. Okay. And I can put something up at uh, wellcoachcouk forward slash, and then we just do nad.html. Perfect. And I just yeah. obviously Nikki. Yeah. So I'm just right, remember I have five so, and three, so <laughs> I'd love to give more away, but you and I both know that the reality of it all is is that we can't. So. <laughs> and this is what you're teaching about being very focused on uh, what's most important, isn't it? And the Absolutely. people you can help. And yep, so for those lucky absolutely. people, obviously, they're in a fortunate position. Yeah. So. Well, so. Uh, never never let grass grow under your feet. Take action, right? <laughs> Brilliant. And what's your main social media channel? Are you mainly a Facebook person, Nikki? Um, I do. Uh, Facebook and Twitter are probably my favorites. I do more of my business contact information on LinkedIn, but um, I regularly, I'm, I'm on my Facebook um, doing my positive motivational quotes on my on my uh, Facebook page and on Twitter, I usually do both. I do um, motivation as well as just education for people. Fantastic. So me, uh, it's Nikki Madeira Anderson on Facebook and N Anderson sixty one on Twitter. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay, well, I always put the teacher on the spot at the end by asking yeah. them, you know, like to just leave like a parting message for the people listening. So, based on everything we've been speaking about today. What's the main message that you would uh, like to drive home as part of this coaching program? Bearing in mind it's like a three-day, fresh start, turnaround program. And obviously I think the fall is such a great time to do this because we've had the summer, great time for self-reflection. You spoke a lot about that. It's now yeah. the fall. What next? Yeah, seize the opportunity and realize your potential. I, I think that's probably the, the biggest message is, is you know all the information that we've given you know you get that excitement when you're when you're on on the you know on the cusp of doing something new and different so you know let me push you off a little bit um, into that unknown territory or into that you know uh, risk part of your life because there's nothing more exciting than getting through it and coming out on the other end and going wow I did it now what's next brilliant Nikki <laughs> um, you have a great day yeah yeah you do the same great speaking to you bye yeah, you as well. Bye-bye.